We are live. So welcome to re the wearing. Um, we might have to cut it quite short because Much, then we might uh, be rescheduling this because we're just I think we might this is not working is it no it's not wonderful but um I am with the lovely Heather Waring um who um is going to talk about um how she's gone from burnout to um to absolutely wonderful, <laughs> um, and she's done that. She's done that through uh, through walking, and she's going to tell us about. Um, and she's written a book, which was launched this January, mm -hmm. and um, and she's on a huge mission to get one million women walking. So I am going to hand over to the lovely Heather. Heather, please could you just introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about you? And then we will start the interview. Okay. Well, as uh, as Emma's just said, I am on a mission to impact the lives of one million women through mm -hmm. this very simple but often underrated activity of walking. And uh, it's something I'm absolutely passionate about. It started as a hobby. It's become um, my kind of life's work. And uh, I've been a coach, a mentor for uh, 20 years now. Yeah. Um, so gone through different evolutions and uh, yeah. And so now I've got this amazing business called One Million Women Walking and we are slowly changing the world. <laughs> oh, fabulous. So um, please could you tell me your story? Well, um, let, let's make it as potted as possible. You know, born and brought up in Northern Ireland in the middle of the Troubles, which kind of ages me. Um, but that was a really weird time. And yeah. it, it's interesting how, in I mean, there's, there's a lot of people, young people growing up now who look back and think, COVID, what a weird time to grow up. So, yeah. you know, when you, when you had um, soldiers on your doorstep with guns and you had rioting and, and yeah. you know, you got sent home from school early, all that was not normal. But yeah. the element of it became your normality. But yeah. what, I, what I did do was escape um, as soon as I possibly could and went to university in Scotland. And I kind of had my plan. I was going to have the 2.4 children. I was going to have the uh, Mary Scotsman in a kilt. I was going to be a part-time speech therapist. Anyway, fast forward. Those things didn't happen. And I ended up doing various things and then ended up in London. Mm -hmm. um, and... Uh, I worked for um, a number of charities and my last job working for someone else was head of education in the British Heart Foundation. And wow. I tell you right. that because two things. One was um, my education committee funded an initiative um, with doctors to get people walking and to right. prescribe walking. Yeah. And the second thing was that I took part in a charity trek uh, along the Great Wall of China. And wow. that was the thing that really got me starting to be passionate about walking and the fact that you could use travel to walk. Um, yeah. So I then became a coach and um, I was very much a kind of business coach. I lost my way, um, so I became a coach in, in 2000, lost my way somewhere around, I think, 2009, 2010. Didn't know it at the time, just knew that I was searching for something to fill this kind of gap because it was something yeah. missing. And um, then in 2013, 14, I burnt out. And Everything then kind of fell into place. I yeah. realized that all those what I now call my wilderness years were me actually just were, were, was the start of me burning out and just getting lost in this melee of stress and overwhelm. And it was the burnout that made me realize that actually what I really wanted to do was take the walking, which became a 
major tool in my recovery and yeah. therefore help transform the lives of other women who yeah. are be also heading that direction. Yeah. So there you have a potted history. Or a pinpoint, you know, can you pinpoint when that turning point was? I think I think the turning point was actually the burnout itself. I I had there's a there's a very famous um, famous among the walking community. So there's a very famous long distance footpath in France, Spain uh, called the Camino de Santiago. It's a pilgrimage route that's been in existence since um, oh medieval times, and it's had a resurgence um, since the eighties. And I decided to walk that with a friend. And a lot of people do it from the French Spanish border in about four to six weeks, but I knew I couldn't do that. So my friend and I decided to do it from the center of France, making it a thousand um, miles long. And uh, we did it section by section. And so I had been on one of those sections and I knew I was working too hard and when I came back from that I spent three days in tears which was really unusual for me I'm usually a very upbeat person I kind of didn't care whether I got dressed or not I couldn't make a decision about what to eat I just didn't care about anything and on the third day I think I picked up um, a book and the reading for the day was all about burnout. And I read that reading and I could tick every single pointer on it. And that was a real kind of, oh my God, that's what's wrong. At least now I know what's wrong. Now I can start to put it right. And I would say that although it wasn't an easy journey, from that time, that's when my transformation started. So that really was a, a, a turning point for me. Oh dear, we frozen again. Well, guys, we're still live, um, and I'm sorry about this. I don't know what's happening. Here we go. <laughs> ah, we're back again. Oh, no, we've gone again. going on um is it the same at your end or is it just mine well you keep you keep freezing and then you know but i don't know if you're getting the same your end or do i keep freezing yeah but you look like you're talking when i come back it looks like i'm the problem i can't tell which way around <laughs> well i know it's, it's really hard to tell i know um so anyway, we don't normally get these issues with StreamYard. It's normally, you know, we're normally like, thank you. I love you. Um, <laughs> but no, not today. I don't love it. Um, no, anyway, it's, not, it's, it, it's looking like slightly better, but I don't want to count my chickens. But anyway. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, um, so before I was so rudely taken somewhere else to an alternative place, <laughs> <laughs> Planet, <yes. laughs> um we were talking about your turning point and identifying the you know that you had burnout and at least yeah. now you knew what you you know you needed to we well, what you had to fix yes um, yeah so how did you um how did you go on to reboot your life well, I took some time out and um, I was I was lucky enough to have a husband who could allow me to take that time out. I lo allow is a strange word there because it wasn't really about giving permission, but it was just giving me the space of saying, listen, 
you need to sort this and I will support you. Right. And of course, exactly. it made a dent in our finances, but, you know, it was good to have that. Yeah. Um, because I had got to a pretty extreme state. And, yeah. and also, I was diagnosed with adrenal fatigue. And often they go hand in hand together because for us women, you know, we... We don't have the testosterone that men do. So we yeah. end up, when we're stressed, battering our adrenals and our cortisol levels go up. Yeah. And we're not, we're not in the greatest place. So um, I took some time out and then gradually I started to just go outside again. I'd always loved walking. It was something that was yeah. really important to me. And just being... I find that being in nature, even if I was, even if I was just in the garden in the early days, um, yeah. was just giving me something kind of special and giving me breathing space. And then I'm very lucky where I live. I live near a large area of forest in the yeah. east side of London. So I started taking walks within Epping Forest. Yeah, and I could just sit on a log and I could look at what was going on around me. And I became so much more aware of what nature had to offer. And I, I guess I was getting into that mindful place, although I yeah. wouldn't say I really yeah. knew at the time. Yeah. Um, so I started using this mindful practice. Yeah. And there is also a, a real rhythm, as you can imagine, about walking. So, yeah. you know, your footsteps on the ground and everything. And th that can become quite a meditation as well. Mm -hmm. So I've never been particularly good at just kind of meditating cross-legged, you know, with the arm. Yeah. Um, um, that's not really me. Really, I've struggled with it. I'd love to do it, but I can't. So the walking became my kind of meditation. And yeah. I would go out in the morning and I would walk and I would come back just feeling feeling so much better. Yeah. And gradually yeah. bit by bit. I mean, I did I did try different alternative therapies as well. Um, and I had some massage and I took some supplements. I did a little bit of work with a naturopath. Um, yeah. but it was really the walking was the constant. And the more I walked, the more I felt I was in touch with me. Yeah. And one of the things that I had been told by, interestingly, by a coach and a counsellor, yeah. and also by a cranial sacral, sacral, cranial sacral therapist, um, was that the connection between body and mind were virtually severed. And I right. talk about this in my book because... That was such a shock to me. I always thought I was quite a touchy feely, you know, in touch woman. Yeah, yeah. And to hear that, that wasn't happening was a bit shock. But I think, you know, us women, we 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 brought up um, consciously or unconsciously to be, you know, we're the mothers, whether we're biological mothers or not. We, we do have that mothering tendency. Yeah, we're yeah. the nurturers, the carers. Yeah. Yeah. We're the ones, even if we've got really supportive partners, we're the ones who tend to see the things that need doing and take those on board. Yeah. Um, and we end up putting our own kind of needs last. You know, we're, we're there for everybody else, you know, whether yeah. it's children, partners, aging parents, whatever, our businesses, our careers. Yeah. yeah. And um, I think that actually means that often as women, we do now get into our heads much more. And I had to relearn that body mind connection yeah. again. Yeah. Um, and so all of these, and you know, over, over the months, I was getting stronger. I knew that I was feeling less pressured because in the early days, anything would turn me into tears. Um, yeah. I was irritable when somebody said the wrong thing, mainly family, because I wasn't seeing anybody else. Um, yeah. But as I got stronger, all those things were falling back, and I could yeah. tell then that I was, I was better. Yeah. And I also had done this um, adrenal fatigue test, so I then had it retested um, and then found I was, I was okay again. Yeah. So I, I knew I could go back into, into the workplace. Yeah. And I just looked at all aspects of my life as well to see where possibly the stress was coming from and therefore where I could make the changes. Yeah. But the wonderful thing I find about walking is it gives us as many mental health benefits as it does physical. Yes. Yeah. 
So it gives us that de-stressing. It gives us that headspace. Yeah. And the lovely thing is you don't need to take hours over it either. No. Um, you, you'll have been like me over the last while. I bet you've been on loads of Zoom calls, you know. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And you come off those and um, your head can feel as if it's about to yeah. explode. Yeah. And in a lot of cases, we have this habit of going back to our computer, getting on with the next thing. Yeah. 10 minutes of a break, 10 minutes of a walk in the garden, a walk around the block, just even going somewhere and sitting for a few minutes. Um, yeah. That can just slow mm -hmm. you down, recharge you, yeah. you a bit of energy. So I, when I work with my clients, I talk to them about using walking in 10, 15, 20 minute chunks. Yeah. Yeah, as well as uh, you know, longer walks, and I run yeah. walking retreats and things too. You know, so yeah. I noticed yeah. something popped up there. Um, yes, about... it did. Yeah, um, is it hard to get tested for adrenal fatigue in the UK? That's a great question because um, doctors don't tend to test for it, and they, I, I had my bloods done at yeah. the same time as I went to a nutritionist. And the doctor said everything was fine. And it was the nutritionist who said, well, do this cortisol adrenal test. Yeah. And that was the one who told me I had adrenal fatigue. Now, it depends where you come from in the sense of some people don't have a lot of time for alternative medicine. So they yeah. would be saying, well, that's just a load of gobbledygook. And yeah. I appreciate this is my view. But yeah. I really felt in my body that there was something wrong. So when the doctor yeah. said you're fine, yeah. I thought, nah. So the adrenal fatigue really helped. So if you feel, uh, the person who asked the question and anybody yeah. else listening, if you feel adrenal fatigue might be an issue for you, go and see a nutritionist or a naturopath and they will be able to put you in touch to get a cortisol test. And that is just a saliva test. And that will be able to diagnose um, yeah. whether you have adrenal fatigue or not. Yeah. I actually believe that we have a hidden epidemic of it because I think yeah. that we have a lot of stress people. And yeah. I, you know, and, and COVID, yeah. some people has, I think for introverts, it's been actually quite nice. And a lot of introverts have actually yeah. enjoyed yeah. that. Yeah. I'm a bit of a mixture of both. I've enjoyed some of it getting a bit I'm getting a bit fed up with it now I'm missing yeah. that connection but yeah. <laughs> it's worth addressing a lot of people you know so yeah. um it's definitely worth checking out and the other thing I would say to anybody concerned about that is if you do have it and you want to make contact I'd be very happy to talk to you and I would like to say to you that coming through it wasn't it had its challenges but yeah. the, the me I came out the other end as was yeah. much better version of me than I'd been for a long time. So yeah. you yeah. can come out the other side to reconnect and reignite that spark yeah. of the person that yeah. you were before. Yeah. So do you think that quite a lot of um, people who, you know, you might classify as having burnout have have got that, uh, you know, adrenal yeah. fatigue? Yeah. I would definitely say they have because, as I said, you're you're battering your adrenals if you're stressed, yeah. you know, and and therefore that's what leads to adrenal fatigue because your adrenals are just absolutely exhausted, you know, and something yeah. has to give, you know. Um, so yeah, I would say absolutely, but you can recover from it, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Well, um, I mean, you know, I was I was at a place where I was just um, completely burnt out, and I wasn't aware, you know, I went, I knew I was stressed, but mm -hmm. that stress had built up over a really long period of time, so gradually. And I think sometimes that's when it's really dangerous. Is that you know that almost your you know like you say your connection with your body and listening to your body. You don't, mm -hmm. you know, it's no, it's okay. I've you know you know, and you feel like you can carry on and carry on and carry on. And actually, sometimes the moment that you stop, you realize kind of how bad you were. Yeah. And I think, um, thank yeah. you for that. I mean, that that's just such an important point, because, 
you know, we feel oh, we're okay. I'll get through exactly what yeah. you said. But I, I know now that by, because that's exactly what I was doing. We, we're doing ourselves a disservice. And the problem is at that stage, we can actually nip it in the bud. You know, maybe, maybe you just take an afternoon off. Maybe you're having a bit of a shitty day and you feel as if you're, you know, wading yeah. through trickle. Don't push on. Just go and do something different. You know, go and watch watch Netflix, you know, um, go for a walk, have a bath, you know, whatever. Yeah. 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 Because you'll probably come back much more productively the next day. Or yeah. just decide to take a day off. And okay, it might mean you have to reschedule some things, but yeah. it's probably more important in the here and the now that you do that because yeah. that will help you recover. It's when you push on and on and on. And like just before I went away on that um, walk that led to the burnout, I yeah. remember thinking, it'll be okay. I'm going away for nine days. It'll be fine. If I'd been going to lie around the swimming pool, it might have been okay, but I was going to walk across the bloody Pyrenees. And, you know, yeah. that, that just mm, yeah. helped, you know. Yeah. Um, so I suppose part of my mission is really to see if I can help women start to recognize these signs earlier and just yeah. take action so they nip it in the bud and it doesn't yeah. go on to a situation where I was where I had to take about a year off, you know. Yeah. yeah. So. Well, I think, you know, with my with my reboot program, it's it's interesting because we one of the first things that we look at, we look at actually, you know, what are your fears around stopping? Yeah. Um, <laughs> because it is it's just it's almost like we have this habitual thing around, you know, it's just it's not it's not easy for a lot of us. Yeah. Um you know, it's not, you know, it's not easy for, you know, it's not easy for me. Um, it, but it having that self-awareness of, you know, of making sure that you do stop and having that connection with, you know, mm. with yourself is, is really important. And not just thinking that you're on that kind of proverbial hamster wheel over and over and over and over again. Mm. Um, we do have choice. We just don't exercise it. Yeah. And I remember being in exactly that place where I'm sitting in a posh hotel in the centre of London, trying with the tears rolling down my face with trying to stop, you know, the mascara running. And yeah. a coach friend of mine going, Heather, your body is yelling at you to stop. And I uttered the immortal words, I know, but I can't. And I think, again, many of us find us that we can't, we can't. Why can you not? I can't let my clients down. I can't let. Now, the thing was, I I tried to keep going. And then I ended up having to email my clients because if I called them, which I would have really liked to have done, I would have just been in floods of tears. And yeah. I sent them an email explaining what had happened and apologizing for the email. And yeah. at the end of the day, they all came back, every single one of them, and said, health is the most important thing. Yeah. Get sorted, and then we'll talk again. And that's exactly what did. Yeah. And most people will respond like that. Yeah, yeah. You know, they'll understand. Um, we just think they won't. But yeah. humans, generally, there are more good humans around, you know. Yes. Well, I found that. You know, I couldn't, um, after being kind of in the corporate world for 19 years, it's like whoever is a competitor was like, oh, you know, it's like stay away, don't talk to them. They're awful. Whoa, you know. And actually, in this world, it's very different because, yes, okay, you know, in certain elements of certain things, you know, um, you know, people, you know, there's lots of crossover with different things that we do and, you know, and, and, you know, and, and competition, but actually the help and the yeah. support that's out there and actually for, you know, both women and men that, you know, that are on a, are on a mission to, you know, to help people to become more aware and, and, and to just, and to look after themselves and to make themselves a priority yeah. It's it's a real um it, it's kind of it's it's amazing what support is out is out there, you know, in terms of 
and so many and so many specialists and different and di- people with different areas and different ways that have healed healed them yeah Just- uh, absolutely yeah and you know we we're very blessed to be in this situation we're very blessed i mean so many of us have are living the life that we've designed that we want to you know we created and so we want you know we yeah. choose to do this and and i feel very blessed every day that i'm living a life that allows me to take groups of women walking and and uh, to be out there and but i think that thing is you know i suppose if i had to say what one of the one things tips that i would say is really do listen to your body and yeah. get to know what your body needs i know that i need fairly regular breaks not not mostly in the day but i need to just have a weekend every so often where i don't have anything booked and that I, that means social stuff as well you know uh, it means um one day a month i do um a thing called a review day and i take my diary and I, my journal and i choose to go somewhere nice where there's some walking and there's a nice place for coffee and there's a nice place for lunch and i do some journaling and i think about the month and i think about what so i'm i'm doing a bit of work but it doesn't feel like work because it's in a you know i've i've changed the environment so i'm getting yeah. fired yeah. I'm doing my walking, which I love, yeah. and I'm having nice coffee, and maybe a glass of wine with lunch, and and you know you can make it as expensive and as luxurious or as cheap as you want it to be, you know. Yeah. But that really reboots me at the end of every month, you know. I'm a daily walk to book me every day, you know. So it's it's getting to know because we're all different and we need different things. And and I know walking also is not the chosen form of activity for everyone. Somebody might be doing a similar thing with with um, running or with um, cycling or yeah. you know I do yoga exercises as well that kind of complement. So you've yeah. got to find your thing. But yeah. walking is so easy to integrate into your day, you know. Yeah, absolutely. Yes, um, I like a little walk in the morning. And a little walk at night, yeah. Um, <laughs> just to uh, to clear my to clear my head, and um, yeah, I love I love walking, um, and yeah. have found I have a little dog to keep me company as well. Oh, that's nice. <laughs> do, you have, do you have nice places to walk where you are? Are you able? Yeah, to lovely. Yeah. yeah. So we live just right near a country park, so oh. we just walk. It's just got a big hill. <laughs> <laughs> work the hill or do you have to go up and over it um whichever way you go you have to go you have to kind of navigate the hill one way or another really um so or you go or you go a different way and go up another hill but it's um yeah it's just so <laughs> sometimes in the morning it's like oh can i face that hill <laughs> yeah <laughs> the achievement of the day straight away <laughs> yeah uh yeah so um yeah but she, she yeah she likes dragging me down that hill even though she's little so uh yeah i have a vision of you emma out there i've been dragged by the hill. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. no yeah, all yeah, big cats, and that's it. I'm gone. <laughs> <laughs> it's only little, though. It's just. <laughs> I don't even have that excuse. I don't have a dog, but um, yeah, still managed to get out a good bit. <laughs> well, my mind, the thing is, it's my thinking time as well. So I can yeah. be anywhere. <laughs> I yeah. can be anywhere and don't spot the dog or whatever if I'm somewhere else. <laughs> <laughs> it is a great it is a great creative space as well. You know, I'll I'll often when I'm out um, walking, I'll often use my um dictaphone kind of thing on my phone because I'll I'll come up with ideas. I've written I've written blog posts, you know, and I've written kind of programs and I've come up with products as I've been walking because yeah. there's something about I think the open air that just expands your creativity and and it makes your decision making easier. So you know I can come back having made decisions that maybe I've been kind of thinking about for a while, and yeah. it's one of the reasons I use it as a kind of vehicle for my coaching and nurturing work as well. Because you you can take women away for three days, five days at a time, 
and organize everything for them. So actually all they have to do is focus on themselves. And, yeah. and that's when some of the great transformations happen as well, you know. Yeah. And I have this thing about walking ancient paths because um, when you walk ancient paths, there's a story there around who walked there before and why did they walk there before and, you know, were they one of the servants carrying the stuff or were they one of the rich people, you know. And then we can relate those to our own stories as well, you know. So what stories are we telling ourselves that are keeping us back? Yeah. What stories are blocking us? But what stories are adding lots of value that maybe we're not using and we could use in our business and we could use yeah. with, uh, with our our family we could tell stories you know and like you know the first question you ask what's your story and you know yeah. people really engage with stories don't they oh i love oh i love a story yeah yeah mm -hmm. well I, we had um a coach i have a women's coaching group on a tuesday night and um yeah it's it's normally all about them but um I just had to tell them a little story last night so yeah they were all like oh that's the best story ever <laughs> you're gonna share it with us now or are you keeping it quiet uh, uh, i might save that for another day okay. <laughs> <laughs> it might go on too long <laughs> this is your time not my time <laughs> was there anything else in particular you wanted to cover um, no, I think it's been lovely. Is there anything that you would like to, anything else you think that we've missed you'd want, you'd want to share? Um, not really. I think one of the things I would just say, if you're interested, if you're listening to this and you're interested in walking, if you do walk, if you think walking would be something you'd like to get into, then I do have a Facebook community called One Million Women Walking. Yes. That's the yeah. world one million women walking and uh, we've nearly got four and a half thousand well we've just got over four and a half thousand women um all over the world on that group it really is a global community and it's one of the most caring sharing loving kind unjudgmental communities yeah. i've ever been a part of and people keep sending me messages about how much they love it and people post photos of their walking so we have people saying oh i'm going to go there on holidays and and we post lots of different information up there we have challenges so you know it's completely free if you want to join us you'd be very very welcome just go look for us on facebook and uh, or if you put links up we put the link up um the other thing is the book if anybody's interested in reading my story it's um how walking saved my life and um yeah you can get that on through usual channels like amazon <laughs> sounds fabulous and if you want to um learn more about rebooting your life or um around working on your mental fitness i have a free challenge next week um mm which is uh yeah five days around 20 minutes a day where we'll be working on your mental fitness and um and also talking about how we learn to pause so um that is will be in the link above our video and well we did get to the end we've survived the technical challenges of the evening so um now heather does that mean you're going to go and have a glass of wine <laughs> <laughs> it probably is yes and i do think you've got better towards the end because we i didn't lose you so i think you know hopefully we had some flow the whole way through <laughs> <laughs> well we did our best didn't we, we, did. we and i did. very much enjoyed it when i could actually see you and i wasn't being booted out somewhere oh, to uh, no. <laughs> perhaps i was going on um, an ancient walk somewhere <laughs> <laughs> even if only in your head <laughs> yeah <laughs> okay well thank you ever so much i've loved interviewing you heather um thanks for having me so thank you